Shattering Glass, Chapter 28 My son was the only one who took responsibility for what he did. He was the only one punished, and he was the only one who never struck a blow. Justice is certainly blind, isn't it? Emily Stewart The band struck up, and all the favorites danced together, under the spotlights. Since Blair was a double winner, she and Rob and Bobster threw their arms over one another's shoulders and swayed in a small circle. Rob smiled and waved at people over Blair's shoulder, seemingly happy with the situation. The song concluded, We congratulated one another and started winding our way back to the tables while the next song belted out. Rob caught up with me by the double doors. Why are you leaving? The party's over. Not yet. Meet me in my office. I'll round up the others. He spun off without waiting for my reply. I hung by the doors, facilitating. I pushed on the bar opening one door. The cold wind swept past, clean and inviting. I stood half in and half out, wanted to leave, yet rooted to the floor. I took a deep breath, stepped back, and released the bar. The wind snatched the heavy door and slammed it shut with a muffled thump. This time, when I entered the room, it was Simon who leaned against the tumbling mats in the same arm cross foot over ankle stance of satisfaction he had exhibited in the restroom. Careful, he said, they are loose baseball bats all over the place. Bob stood against the wall next to the door. He held out a bat. I almost broke my leg on this one, he said, and began thumping the bat in an even rhythm against the side of his shoe. I eased into the room and bent for a couple of errant bats. Rob and Coop blew in. Rob took a long look at Simon leaning against the mats, the light from the hall changing Glass's face into light and shadow. Rob took one of the bats from my hand. Planning to play a few innings? I attempted a laugh, but fell short. Nope, just trying to neaten things up. I'm going to do the windows next. Rob turned to Simon. Congratulations, Simon. Thanks, Rob. You too. His voice was smug. How'd you do it? Rob asked. Do what? Rob held the bat by the neck and twisted it with the butt end against the concrete. It grated and combined with Bobster's soft thumping, it made my head pound. Rob's mouth thinned and straightened. He surveyed every one of us and swiveled his gaze back to Simon. Don't give me your shit, Glass. Tell me how you did it. Rob was a coil snake shaking his rattles. I know how many people I talked to. You should have won. I did. I was elected wittiest. Rob flicked the bat out and knocked Simon's foot off his ankle. Hey, that hurt! Rob held the bat up and pushed the butt in against Glass's shoulder, nudging him against the mats. I'm not asking again. If you don't want to talk, I'll beat it out of you. Rob, cool down. This is getting sort of out of hand, Coop said. Shut up, Coop. Rob spun on him. I'm talking to Glass. He shoved Simon's shoulder again, harder this time, knocking him off balance. Simon stumbled, then righted himself. All right, Rob, stop this shit. I'll tell you what I did. I built an override into the school's computer the same way I did to change Young's schedule. Any vote that went to me for class favorite was transferred to you. He thrust his chin out and leaned back against the mats. He drilled Rob with a dark look, lifted his foot and placed it carefully back over his ankle. I left the wittiest category alone. I wanted to know if I could win an election on my own. You fat-ass little fuck. How dare you? Glass interrupted. His voice heated. How dare I? How dare you? Why do you think you can call every shot? What you wanted wasn't what I wanted. Rob banged the bat against the concrete. We had a deal. Simon gave a hardly perceptible shrug. Essentially, the deal is the same. You were going to make me popular. You did. Rob banged the bat again. He took an angry stride toward Glass. You were supposed to be elected class favorite. That was our deal. Stop banging that bat. Do you think you're scaring me? I don't care what our deal was. It was better for me this way. 
the bat shot out and whacked Simon across the knees. Simon went down in a heap, yelling as he fell. Damn it, Rob, stop it. Put that bat down right now or... Rob screamed now. Or what? What do you think you can do to me? Coop stepped forward, his hands out. Rob, why don't we go outside? The girls are waiting. He edged closer. Rob lashed out with the bat and smacked Glass's shoulder. It hit solidly, making a thick whoomp. So, what's fat ass gonna do? Huh, Simon? You wanna be the boss? Who's the boss now? Simon squealed. Stop! Are you crazy? Rob, don't. Coop reached to take the bat. Rob stiff-armed him in the face, pulling Coop up short. Shit, Rob, get a hold of yourself. You almost broke my nose. Keep out of my way, Coop. He spun back to Simon. Come on, Glass. Who's the boss now, huh? Simon staggered to his feet, rubbing his shoulder. His face was hard, his black eyes snapping. He yelled, I can hurt you, Rob. I can hurt you plenty, and I don't need a bat. Bobster still thumped his bat, the thudding faster and louder, like a racing heart. Rob stepped up closer, poking Simon in the gut with the bat. Sure you can, Glass. Sure you can. I didn't know what Glass had in mind until he looked at me, but his look was that of a conspirator, and I snapped to what was going to happen and went numb. Don't, Simon. I don't need a weapon, Rob. All I need to do is say your name. Your real name, Robert Haynes Baddock Jr. Rob stepped back fast. How did... Simon stepped forward into Rob. He was furious and out of control as he jabbed his finger at Rob. I know more, Rob. Lots more. Tell us about your dad, Rob. You, Rob couldn't finish. He was breathing hard, gasping for air and swallowing it like it was solid, choking it down. Glass circled to the other side of Rob, still shouting and gesturing. Quite a little story, Rob. What I find so curious is why it went on so long. Shut up. Shut up, Glass. Shut up. Rob's voice was raw and strangled as he spun, following Simon. Bob's bat still pounded on the floor. Simon edged closer and pushed his fingers against Rob's chest, shoving him off balance. I don't think so. He jabbed Rob again. It was a big, big story in little old Foley. Simon circled Rob again and ended with his back against the match where he started. Man accused by his wife of molesting their son. She discovered it, but it had gone on since the kid was 11. Simon made that peculiar, chuffing sound that he used for laughter. Mom slaps the old man in jail, but wow, the kid is now 16. How come it went on so long, Rob? Did you? Simon paused, as if deciding on the word then. Like it? He took another step forward and kicked the tip of Rob's bat where it rested on the concrete. Is that why you got riled when Lance called you faggot? Glass looked at me. That covers all the main points, doesn't it, young? Rob's chest was heaving as he turned to me. Young? What do you have to do with this? I shook my head denying. That's why you asked about my dad. You already knew. You. He gripped the bat with both hands, lifting it. Rob, listen to me. I don't try to weasel out of it now, young, Simon said. You're knee deep in shit. By the way, you owe me the election. I changed a few numbers here and there, he turned. You too, Bobster. Neither of you guys made it. Coop was the only one I didn't have to help. Is that great or what? The dummy and the dweeb were the only ones elected on our own. Bob stopped thumping the back. I don't get it. What the fuck is going on? You're as blind as Rob, Simon said. Did you think anybody bought that story about losing your ring? Everybody knows that big, tough-talking Bobster is just that. All talk. Lance told you to hand over your ring. And you didn't do jack shit except say please and thank you. Shut up, Glass, you're lying. Bobster held the bat across his middle, one hand gripping each end. 
Run outside and ask Bobster. His voice reeked of hate. Ask what the talk is. And by the way, how do you think Lance knew where you'd be that night? Shut up. Shut up, Glass. Bob screamed, his face red, the veins thick and rope-like. Christ, what a group we've got here. One is the son of some kind of faggot. Another who's so chicken that he ought to be a woman. And you... He jabbed his finger in my direction. One who's such a pussy that he gives up his girl because somebody told him to. And to think, young, it was all for nothing. Rana's gone, and Simon Glass has her, and all you're left with is shit. Tell us how likely to succeed you are now. Simon wasn't done with me. And haven't you figured it out yet? He jerked his head toward Rob. He's not your friend. He's not my friend either, but I knew that all along. But you? You were so busy trying to keep his approval. You didn't notice that Rob controlled you. He gave you permission to take Rana, just so he could make you give her up. Rob wants to be the puppet master. He could tell the whole school who to like, and he told you to. Shut up, Glass. Simon was turned to me. He didn't see Rob behind him raising his bat high. Simon only caught a glance of the motion as the bat descended, but the bat was too fast. The blow struck with too much passion, too much strength. Simon flung up one hand and the bat hit it, cracking the bones like popsicle sticks, and then it powered on, smashing into the side of his face, caving in his cheekbone, cratering a bloody dent in his forehead. And he sank down, Simon screamed, and the world erupted into screams of pain, screams of rage, the thud of bats smashing into a body, the smell of blood and fear. Bob let loose with the waist-level baseball swing. I think it caught Simon's shoulder. I heard a sharp crack. I backed off into the shadows. I still gripped the bat, but it hung along my side. I was too weak to strike and too filled with hate to stop the blows. I stood and I watched. Coop screamed and shouted, but the only words I understood were Simon's and Rob's. Somewhere between the thuds, screams, and silence, Simon screamed. Why? Rob growled. Satisfaction, Glass. Satisfaction. His back caught the back of Simon's neck. Coop who had been screaming and pulling at Bob and Rob, trying to grab the bats from their blood-slicked fists, shoved into the middle of the melee, his arms raised in a protective curve over Simon's body. I saw Rob's bat swing directly into Coop's knee. I think Bob tried to stop, but his bat had arched up and passed the point of no return and smashed into Coop's tear-streaked face. He dropped like a brick in deep water. It was as if... A current switched off. First Bob, then Rob stepped back. They looked around as if trying to decide where they were. Rob dropped his bat. It clattered to the concrete and rolled. Bob looked at his bat, groaned and slung it against the wall. Dazed, we stared at one another, at the blood splattered on our faces and clothes, on the walls and dropping our unwilling gazes to the floor. We heard the sounds of running, then screams. We stood silent and unmoving.